And we're back with another series of Let's Play. I'm your host, the RPG Guy, and that's right, we're going to be tackling King's Quest for The Perils of Rosella. And uh, we're going to be doing a neat little version of it that just came out last year, um, or back in 2021. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm eager to uh, try this version of the game out. This is a uh, kind of an update from the original, going and getting rid of the tight text part of the gaming uh, mechanic and replacing it with the point and click as we saw in the remakes of King's Quest 1 through 3 as well as King's Quest 5, 6, and 7 use. So th this is legitimately a version that is legit point and click fully. Um, and it'll be interesting to see how the how we play through the interface. I, I tried it out for like 30 minutes just to make sure that the interface seemed to work right and everything. So yeah, and this is made by Dr. Slash, I believe, over uh, at Adventure Game Studio. This 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 uh, this version of it, of the game. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm eager to show it off because I don't know if anybody's actually done a, a, a Let's Play or a, a playthrough of this version live on YouTube or on Twitch or what have you. So yeah, I'm, I'm eager to actually kind of show this, this version off. So uh Let's go ahead and uh, get started. And if we play it old school, thank you very much. We ain't chumps. But yeah, they have, they have that version. Yes, Dr. Slash. Programming additional art and additional writing by Dr. Slash. And the Adventure Game Studio Engine by Chris Jones. So there's a whole website dedicated to adventure games where people have made their own or have like done used this engine to update really old games. So they can get rid of the typing mechanic and make it more of a point and click that we see traditionally in in like mid to late 90s um, a point and click adventures and stuff. So, yeah, it, it, I'll be it'll be interesting to see and if there's any hopefully there's no glitches or anything. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I'm eager to try it out. So here we go. With the return of his long-lost son, Alexander, and the rescue of his daughter, Rosella, from the terrible dragon, old King Graham decides it's time to pass on his adventurer's hat to younger blood. So it takes off literally where King's Quest Three ended, which is great. He flings the battered hat towards his children while his wife, Queen Valenice, proudly looks on. Holy crap, it's flying through the air! The hat arches through the air. Suddenly, King Graham expresses a terrible squeezing pain in his chest. Help me, he rests. The trans fats! The trans fats! The adventurer's hat lies and claimed upon the floor, forgotten. Really, Graham? I'm dying. Why do you care if I fart? King Graham lies weakly in bed. Father, father death hovering near. Hey, hey, Graham. You're gonna die. You're, you're gonna die. Grief suddenly overwhelming her. Rosella runs from the room. Oh, father, she sobs. You're still young. You should have many years ahead of you. Blah, 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 blah. It goes faster than I can keep up. Do you really mean that? A soft voice asks. Rosella looks up but sees no one. Who's speaking to me? I'm not clicking on anything, so this is all automated for some reason. I am, the voice says. Look in the magic mirror. And I think this was an issue in the original. Some of the text boxes in the, uh, in the introduction go by too fast to read out loud. Or if you were a slow reader, you know, kind of struggles. Then there's some text boxes that are up there way longer than they should be. Rosella sees an image in the mirror. Who, who, who are you? She queries. Who are you? Kind of looks like, like, <laughs> I don't know, maybe Princess Toadstool without the crown on before, before she got really over animated eyes and uh, not anime eyes, but whatever. I'm the fairy Janesta. In my land of Tamir, there is a remarkable tree. This tiny tree needs 100 years to bear a single fruit, but this is no ordinary fruit for the person. If, if a person were to eat it, they would find that good health and well-being would be theirs for many years. Can I ferment it in? Can I can I make it into a beer or wine? Rosella is much heartened by this news. Where is the land of Tamir? Janesta smiles. Tamir is very far away, but with my magic I could bring you here. 
I only need you to sacrifice your firstborn. I mean, uh, you, yeah, you can just, I'll just bring you here. Rosella senses that there is more to the story, but I suppose there are some problems. Could be. Again, Janesta smiles. Yes, you are correct, Rosella. If you are willing to come to Tamir, I will explain the situation. However, once I bring you here, I can't send you back. You will have to help me first. Confused, Rosella says, I don't know. What if I can't help you or find the tree? She's losing connection. Janesta pleads, you must decide now, Rosella. My powers are growing weaker by the minute. I didn't charge my magic cell phone. Ah! Now the fairy is but a faint glimmer, her voice barely audible. If you care for your father, say yes now. And suddenly, she's gone. Yes! And boom shakalaka. And here come the three fairies, it looks like. One big fairy, great fairy, and two small fairies. The lovely fairy speaks. I am the fairy Janesto. Welcome to Tamir. Rosella looks awestruck at the fairy. She is stunningly beautiful, but still there is a certain sadness to her. Like Linnea Quigley when she was fired from my job once. <laughs> be act be movie actress for anybody wondering. Uh finally Rosella speaks. I know you would like me to help you in some way. How can I help you? Janesta looks sadder than ever. You're wrong, Rosella. You see, I'm losing my magical powers. Yesterday, as I was strolling through the woods alone, an evil fairy caught me and stole my talisman. Talisman. The fairy sighs. She yanked it from my neck and raced away, screeching with laughter. Immediately, I felt my powers diminishing and my body weakening. I will die in 24 hours if my talisman is not returned. So they call her a, f the lo a fairy in this one. I always thought she was a witch, but maybe that's a uh, text error, even as far back as the original. Intently, Janesta looks at Rosella. Lelot is very evil and will use the talisman to bring more evil to Tamir. Now I fear it will con it will contaminate my whole country. Further, I cannot send you home without my talisman. Gosh darn it. Rosella is unsure as to what she can do. Meekly, she asks, I want to help you, but how? You can do more than you think, Rosella. Janesta assures her. I believe you will be able to penetrate Lelote's domain. Take this drill of greater penetration. Suddenly, Rosella remembers the tiny tree. Can you tell me where to find the magic fruit? Remorsefully, Janesta looks at Rosella. It will not be easy to reach the tree. It grows on a tiny island within a vast swamp on the other side of the Great Mountains. Bravely fighting back tears, Rosella says, I will help you in any way I can, Janesta. How can I find Lelot? She be that away! The beautiful fairy points eastward. Lelot's castle overlooks Tamir from the Great Mountains. Janesta looks weaker as she says, There is not much more I could do, Rosella. As it is, it will be difficult for me to fly home again. You don't say. One thing I must do for you, though. I shall disguise you as a peasant girl so as not to attract attention. Fair enough, I guess. Th thank you, Janesta. I think. Rosella stammers. I've reduced your breasts and booty by 30%. It will be better for you. The fairy says, well, I must be awful. I can still fly. I know you can do it. Goodbye. Good luck. And don't fuck it up. <laughs> and there she goes. Flying away. Leaving us to our own devices. On the cold, lonely beach. Well... You're on your own, Rosella. Game's just flat out like, get fucked! I 
I can't do anything yet, so just just wait for it. Could be also the game is stuck, but that's fine. We could just start it normally. So I think it's I, okay. So this is like probably something that they he might want to fix in a more, you know, in an update. Though it sounds like it's just ending here. I'll let it keep going. Wow, we had to stand there quite a long time. <laughs> maybe maybe there was a uh, issue with the the cutscenes and whatnot, and then lining up with the music. All right. So, yeah, you can see there's a walking icon, an eye icon, a hand icon, a speech icon, and look at that interface. This is all new. Um, the original game, you would have to type in actions and whatnot. There's even a menu to save and all of that stuff. So, yeah, pretty, pretty cool little interface. So we'll go ahead and make our first save. Uh, we'll call this one son of a beach <laughs> all right and so let's get moving i know some of you who are king's quest 4 vets this is jarring to actually see the game work in this particular manner for those of you who've not played the fourth one it may be because it's not a point and click option there exists an option now which is pretty cool You see a beautiful wild unicorn in the meadow. Its coat is dapple gray and its wonderful horn shines like gold. The unicorn sh shies at your approach and trots away. It's not trotting anywhere yet. The raven doesn't look to be a friendly bird at all. But there he goes. We can't do much about him right now, so we'll let him trot away as he does. We'll be dealing with him soon enough. Gosh darn it. Okay, hold on. We gotta make... Now, like in many King's Quest games, we gotta make a certain scene kind of happen. Cupid appears, and he's getting ready to go swimming. Oh no, you startle Cupid. He quickly jumps out of the pool and flies away in fear. Yeah, you better run, you stupid... Stupid Cupid, motherfucker. Feeling sorry for startling Cupid, you decide to hold on to his bow for safekeeping so you can return it to him next time you meet. So yeah, we pretty much just stole that shit. And look! Looky there. You're carrying Cupid's bow, complete with two golden arrows. So like I said, a fully interactive um, menu system. I believe in the original it was just text. So, pretty cool stuff. You notice something glimmering under the stone bridge. You kneel down and peer under the bridge. Aha! You've found a small golden ball. You pick it up and carry it with you. Let's take a look at this. The metal ball is the size of a large button and seems to be made of pure gold. Back in Daventry, you used to have one just like this and would always bring it to a pond to play with it when you were young. Rustic Stone Bridge adds a bit of charm to this part of the woods. Let's keep moving. A large frog stares back at you with big, bulging eyes. This is a very pretty little pond. Floating upon it are many beautiful water lilies. You spy a large frog sitting on top of a big lily pad, and yes, it's wearing a little gold crown. Well, there's something you don't see every day. Seeking to claim to seeking some calm and rest, you sit down by the pond and watch the water lilies float serenely on its surface as you roll the golden ball between your hands. As your mind wanders off, you accidentally drop the golden ball into the pond. From atop a lily pad, a large green frog leaps into the water and disappears from view. A moment later, the frog emerges with, Yes, your lost ball. It seems as if the frog is kindly returning it to you. Thanks, buddy. 
Oh, you're such a nice frog. Let's go head over there and uh, take a look, as they say. Squinching up your nose in disgust, you catch the large frog and hold it in your hand. It stares at you with its big bulgy eyes and wobbles its throat. The frog sits calmly in the palm of your hand. Its big eyes stare to yours. A little gold crown rests upon its head. Go ahead and give him an old touch of Reno here. You look at the frog's green lips. Mwah! Good. You feel silly doing this as you slowly put your mouth against the frogs. Oh, baby. Suddenly, a little green, the little green frog changes into a handsome prince. Who are you? The prince demands. <coughs> I thought you were supposed to be a princess. Why, you're nothing more than a peasant girl. You blanch a bit at the remark, but say nothing. Well, to tie, he says, I'm off. Here, you may keep this. To your surprise, he tosses the little golden crown to you as he takes his leave. Good riddance, you think? What a dick! Guy's a complete asshole. Alright, well, we'll take our little ball back. And let's go ahead and do some more uh, exploring. Like every King's Quest game, there's like a bit of preliminary stuff we want to make sure that we're doing. Which is exploration and doing and solving any little problems that can easily be done. Thus building up an inventory of goodies for us to solve even uh, more problems with. Let's go ahead and check this place out. There are one washed dishes all over the room. This is the main room of the Seven Dwarfs Cozy House. What a mess it is. What a bunch of slobs. Here, let's give them a hand. Let's snow white this place up. Turn it from a bachelor pad to a decent domicile. Housekeeping. Would you like fresh pillow? No, please go away. Housekeeping. Would you like blanket? No, for the love of God, please go away. Housekeeping. You want me to suck you off? What kind of establishment is this? Oh, I love Tommy Boy. R.I.P. Chris Farley. R.I.P. If only cleaning was this easy. And it's done. Now it's done. <laughs> All right. But she's not fully done. She's about to do the sweep sweep. She learned her sweeping technique from Alexander. In the all of 30 seconds they got to spend time together once they got back to the castle. You hear the dwarfs approaching. Oh hi. Oh hi. We don't want to get sued by Disney and die. Do -do 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 -do. You watch quietly as the dwarfs file in one by one. Get a bowl of soup and take a seat at the table. Oh, wait, 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 we got to do it. Boom. There we go. Uh, yeah, I know Disney can't sue just because you made a game with seven dwarves in it. And even if you had Snow White. Why? Because Snow White and the Seven Dwarves as a story is public domain. I actually had to explain that to somebody. They thought Disney made up the story Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. And Aladdin and all those other ones. I was like, no, how old are you? 25 and you've never known that they were original stories? No. <sighs> and yes, we gotta wait for all seven dwarves. He hi, he hi, who is this bitch she'll die? Do 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 he hi, he hi, he hi, he hi, he hi. For lying you will die. Do 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 ow. <laughs> like sitting here taking off my band-aids from a from a mosquito bite. A really bad set of mosquito bites. They're ripping off my arm hairs! Ah! I didn't 
is usually my advice to people is to just pull it off quickly. And of course I don't. I'm trying to do it quietly as opposed to quickly. <laughs> so we've got our sixth dwarf, meaning we're almost done with this. The seventh dwarf. Uh, this dwarf must really be hungry. He's getting two bowls of soup. What a fat asshole. I mean, uh, yeah. The seven dwarves seem pleased that you tidied their messy home. One politely asks you your name. You tell him, and he cordially invites you to sit down with them and eat a bowl of soup he got for you. Oh, he's so nice. What a nice little dwarf. You get a little crown. We thought he was taking two bowls. You seat yourself at the table and begin to eat the surprisingly delicious soup. It's made out of people. You politely talk to the dwarf nearest to you. Where? What? You politely talk to the dwarf nearest to you. Where are you from, Rosella? He asks. You tell him, Daventry. Hmm, the dwarf thinks for a moment. Never heard of it. Again, you engage a conversation. Is Daventry far from... Is Daventry far from Tamir? The dwarf wonders. Very far, you tell them. How did you get here, they ask. As you don't want to get into specifics, you tell them, by sea. The answer seems to satisfy them as they return to their eating. You speak to the nearest dwarf again. He wonders why you are here in Tamir. You explain that you are in service of Janesta, the good fairy, who wishes to regain her magic talisman from the clutches of Lalot, the bad fairy. Well, young lady, the dwarf states, I don't envy you. You're much braver than I am, darling, with that evil fairy. You attempt conversation another time, but the dwarves tell you they must hurry and finish their soup. They need to get back to work before dark. Okay, so pretty much now we just have to wait till they're ready to go. see the forest outside the window you see seven small men seated around their dining table noisily slurping bowls of soup <laughs> the one on the end in the blues just sniffing it snorting it through his nose with a, with a straw just like <laughs> right they will get up just much like I think the opening is probably gonna take a minute or two Oh, goodbye, and thanks for the soup, you call as they take their leave. I think I skipped a, a, a thing. <laughs> Sorry. And now they leave. And we wait for them at least to leave one. And again, we wait for them to leave one at a time. A very elongated scene, but a necessary one. There we go, where it belongs. And... You finish your soup also. It was the best soup you have ever tasted. Maybe though you were just really hungry. And then of course we're gonna clean up this mess here. Cause we're such a nice, we're such a nice princess. Rosella's a good, kind woman. She's a very nice lie die for you. I hope that's the last of it. There's a blue pouch in the center of the table. Love that little chime. <laughs> a lot of these games have a chime. Always like, oh. The seven dwarves must have been really preoccupied with their dinner to forget this blue pouch among the bowls. You open the diamond pouch and look inside. Many diamonds flash and sparkle from within. Carefully, you close it again so as not to lose any. 
Oh, they must have left this on accident. Well, let's do the right thing. Rosella's all about doing the right, doing the right thing. So we'll go find those dwarves. I wonder where they might be. Um, and we'll give these, make sure that they get these back. As Rosella is seemingly wandering the back there. <laughs> And there she goes. Oh, and she slipped a little bit. That's okay. At least it wasn't a dangerous fall that could have taken place. And then let's go ahead and return this back to the head dwarf. Bring an honest person. Being an honest person, you offer the forgotten pouch of diamonds to the dwarf. His gruff exterior softens a bit. Nah, you can keep it, he says. We got plenty here. We also got an extra lantern we ain't using. Here, go ahead and take it. The dwarf's gruffiness returns as he says, Now skedaddle on out of here. So, we get to keep the diamonds and we get a lantern for our trouble. And as he said, we'll skedaddle away. <laughs> Whoop. I gotta make sure we go up the path the proper way. Okie dokie. Let's go ahead and head. That's okay. Over this way. Or not. Let's go ahead and head north. Because in order for us to grab the, a few other goodies, we need to have a few more items. And while we're in the area, we'll grab other items, too, while we're here. Things that we're not going to use right away, we'll use it much later in the game. But we can grab them now because we're in the area. All right, let's move. So we'll come in here. You have a few remaining books on the bookshelves. Only one catches your attention. It is entitled The Complete Works of William Shakespeare. <clears throat> you remove the Shakespeare book from the shelf and carry it with you. An interesting portrait of a young girl hangs above the fireplace. You gaze at it intently and, and notice that her eyes seem to stare at the left wall of the parlor. You examine the left wall very closely and notice a little latch. What could it mean? What could it mean? You flip the latch in the wall, and behold, you have discovered a secret door. Grab this. And again, it'll be a bit of time before we actually get around to using that, but now that we have it, we're all good. All right, let's head on out this way. We got a few more things that we'll want to grab just to get them. It's so like I said, we we need a handful of goodies before we can really continue and start dealing with the story, the main storyline. And again, we're just knocking stuff out here. Oof, you're a little froggy. And in he goes. This is what allows us to get under the waterfall here. It sure feels good to be yourself again. What's this? Why? It's a cave behind the waterfall. You see an old board lying by the cave entrance. Let's go ahead and grab that. 
All right, we need to be a little careful here. Because if something appears, we got to run away. But all we're doing is grabbing that for now. We'll be back here later. And oh no! Alright, let's head down this way. And we'll head towards the mountain path. Oh no! What is this? Oh, uh, we're being attacked by an army of flying Harvey Mandels! Ha! Ah! No! No! Well, my pets, Lelotuses, what have you drug home today? Lelot gives you a once-over, and as she does, her red eyes begin to narrow. Are you a foolish girl who wandered here by mistake, or are you a spy here, sent here by my enemy, Janesta? You swear to Lelote that you are nothing but a poor peasant girl who has lost her way. But she doesn't seem to believe you, as her mouth begins to snarl and her eyes narrow to mere slits. For the first time, you experience real fear and begin to tremble. Lelote snarls, you don't look stupid enough to have wandered here. I believe you're a spy. Take her to the cell. Oh, uh, no. Not Harvey Mandel. What is it? What is the guy? Uh, the voice actor from Bobby's World? Howie Mandel. I said Howard Mandel. <sighs> Getting it confused with Howard Keitel and Harvey Weinstein. Ugh. So, you know, there's not much we can really do here. I guess I should read these while we're waiting. At least two unfortunate individuals have met their end here. The window is too high. Um, You see nothing of importance on the wall. The whip hangs on the wall. There are metal chains hanging from one of the cell walls. The ominous machine lurks in the corner of the cell. As to its purpose, you don't want to know. I don't think you... I don't know how to use this machine, and you don't ever want to know. You attempt to remove one of the stone bricks, but it won't budge. The whip is securely attached to the wall. Besides, you wouldn't want it. Yeah, oh, they don't know me too well. The window does not open. I'm just kidding, guys. You hear the henchmen returning. Perhaps they are setting you free. I, if they are, there's always a catch. The henchman motions you to follow him out of the cell. As we are escorted back by two Howie Mandel, flying Howie Mandels. Lolo gives you a sickly sweet look. You're lucky, my dear, she coos. My precious son Edgar has taken a liking to you, and he believes you. He's convinced me to give you a chance to prove your innocence. Hmm. You glance at the homely young man standing next to Lolo. He blushes. Lolo continues, I wish to own the unicorn that inhabits the Meadowland. Bring me the unicorn and I shall not only set you free, but reward you as well. To her henchman, Lolo orders, go, take her back to the forest. Well, so we now actually have something we got to do. Yay. So we now have a direction. She clearly wants that unicorn we saw earlier, and we're going to have to go through a bunch of shenanigans to get that unicorn to work for us. So anyway, thanks for stopping by, guys. Like, comment, subscribe, all the good stuff. Check out my Twitch channel, twitch.tv, subject our studios for more live gaming action. Gaming action, because when we come back, quest for the unicorn, we must go. And it is quite a bizarre quest indeed. Thanks for stopping by, guys. We'll see you guys next time.